Now, the guy you can see just in the top of this submarine is an explorer called Victor Vescovo. He's climbed the world's seven highest peaks. He's been to the North and the South Poles. That's not enough, though. His next challenge is to go somewhere even more remote, because on Thursday night, he'll begin leading a group of scientists and oceanographers on a mission to the deepest points of the world's five oceans, where no one's been before. Now, scientists are saying this is arguably more dangerous than landing on the moon, and all of this requires this brand new submarine. It's been test run in the Bahamas. You can see some pictures that have been released of that happening. Only two people can fit in, Victor plus another scientist, and they're going to be going 11 kilometers down. That's so deep that any communication takes seven seconds to travel from the sub to the surface, and the pressure at this depth is 800 times stronger than it is on the surface. Well, the group is going to be starting out here, close to Puerto Rico, they'll be looking at the Puerto Rico Trench. That's the deepest point in the Atlantic Ocean. They'll spend several months then zigzagging around. They'll, for instance, be taking their submarine to the Mariana Trench. Um, it's the deepest location on Earth. So deep, Mount Everest would fit into it. Arguably, the most dangerous dive they're going to be doing isn't the deepest of them, but it's the coldest. They'll be venturing into the waters of the Malloy Deep in the Arctic. Well, I've been talking to Victor Vescovo along with David Lee, who's going to be filming what he's doing. They're off the coast of San Juan in Puerto Rico. The submarine is the limiting factor, uh, which is behind us. Three and a half years in the making, and uh, it's designed to go down to the full ocean depth of 11,000 meters. It's about third generation technology, and uh, it's got a titanium sphere, which is the core element of the design, but it's also surrounded by something called syntactic foam which uh, will float in water, but it is very durable. It has glass beads and an epoxy matrix that allows it to not be compressed even when it goes down to full ocean depth. So it's a, a very advanced revolutionary submersion. And what's the working environment going to be for you like once you're inside there and you're several kilometers down? That's a two-person submersible within that titanium capsule. We have a reasonable amount of room, like uh, uh, two pilots in the cockpit of a jet. It's, it's not exactly roomy, but it's uh, definitely habitable. Habit habit and we'll often spend anywhere from six to nine hours on a typical mission. And David, how are you going to be able to capture all of this from the surface? So we're going to be mounting cameras on the outside of the sub. They've got to be specialist cameras to go down to such depths. There's not many of them in the world that can cope with the, the crushing pressures down there. And we're also going to have cameras on the inside. Uh, so there's no escape for Victor. He's going to be um, sort of dogged, uh, dogged every, every uh, second of the way and document that dive. Whatever he sees, we will see on our cameras. And uh, it should be very exciting when he gets to the bottom. No one's ever been that deep before in this, in this trench. So there's going to be some amazing sights that we'll bring back. Um, and it'll all be part of a five-hour uh, series on Discovery Channel at the end of it. So I think you're also wearing biometrics, so if I get really nervous or scared, they'll see that as well. So I'll have to keep calm. They're all uh, suspect. Well, Victor, you'd be forgiven for getting nervous and scared. It sounds like a daunting mission. Um, how does it compare with other things that you've done? Well, it certainly feels a little bit safer because I'm surrounded by titanium and I'm in a relatively docile environment, or at least it seems that way. Uh, but you can't really see or feel the pressure. Comparing that to something like climbing Mount Everest, where you have the whipping wind, uh, the incredible noise, the cold, that definitely seemed a lot more dangerous, and maybe it was. But uh, they're all just different. They all have their own unique risks. And David, some things need to be done just because you can, but what are the benefits beyond the challenge uh, of this mission, not just going down once, but five times? Well, it's a unique opportunity for uh, the team of scientists who are on this expedition. There's uh, marine biologists who are going to be studying the creatures that live down there. There's geologists as well who will be looking at the, the landscape. We'll be scanning it in incredible detail uh, and discovering all sorts of new things about the geology of these very, very deep trenches. So it's a huge opportunity and very exciting, and we're very privileged to be, to be on board with it. And Victor, I must ask you, obviously we're hoping this all goes very smoothly, but if things were to get complicated down there, how easy is it to get help from the surface? It's virtually impossible. And the issue is that uh, even communications are difficult. When we're at full ocean depth in the Mariana Trench, it'll take almost six or seven seconds for a transmission to go one way. So there's really no rescue capability. Nothing can really go down that far. So what it really comes down to is just having a lot of redundant systems on the vessel. And if anything really goes wrong, I'll drop the ballast weights and just get up as soon as I can. But we have, we hope, uh, really thought through any possible contingency so we can get up safely. Best of luck.
to all involved. We'll check in with them as they go about this extraordinary mission, and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.